Good afternoon from Dubai, United Arab Emirates, and thank you all for joining us on this very exciting webinar. Uh, my name is uh, Fauzi, uh, Fauzi Bawab from Merck Training and Consulting, and it is indeed a pleasure to be with you today to shed some light on this very interesting uh, methodology set of practices that uh, were developed by uh, a leading company in the automotive world, which is Toyota, of course, uh, but then it, it moved to uh, many industries. Um, I, I thought uh, I would share with you some of my experiences uh, deploying some of the lean uh, tools in projects, and hence I thought I would share with you today uh, some of the most common uh, tools, I would call them, uh, to get you started with your first uh, lean project. Uh, so we're going to start our discussion with a little bit of uh, what we call uh, a, so, sort of a review of the lean uh, concept itself. And then we're going to move into uh, three of my uh, favorite uh, tools that we can use uh, once we get into the lean uh, project. Uh, just a quick reminder, uh, this webinar is recorded and will be shared on the Merck website and YouTube channel so you can come back and uh, look at it again and review it as well. So uh, the, uh, as we said, the webinar is recorded and will be shared uh, on public uh, webinars or uh, YouTube and uh, Merck website. So I have uh, put, uh, you know, some, some kind of a, an agenda or an outline for us uh, this afternoon. Uh, and uh, I know that we're we're restrained by time. I mean, we can spend you know the next five days talking about lean and its importance. But uh, if you look at the agenda, I'm, I'm going to start talking about why did I pick this topic, uh, the importance of the discussion on on the tools, uh, and then uh, I'm going to be referring to something called the quality maturity ladder that can help us decide whether you know should we go with the lean project, should we go with the Six Sigma project, should we just do uh, something uh, which we refer to as the plan, do, check, act, something to measure the maturity of the organization, and then choose. Uh, the right methodology, whether it's lean or another methodology. Uh, we'll jump into a quick introduction to lean uh, and some of the main principles and what are the core values that lean uh, is, is, is asking for. Uh, and we'll talk about maybe quickly about the lean history and then the five lean principles. And then we'll start talking about some of the lean tools. So the lean toolkit contains many tools. Uh, I've picked three of them to the to be discussed today and i'm looking at hoshin canary uh, i'm looking at value stream mapping and i'm looking at 5s as the uh, three tools uh, we will be discussing uh, today uh, and once we do that we'll have some time maybe to take your questions q and a uh, but uh, what i would like to ask you is if you have any questions uh, just uh, send them on the chat uh, and then we can, uh, you know, answer them towards the end of the uh, webinar, so we can allow enough time for your questions uh, and answers. Uh, now, just a little bit on on Merck Training and Consulting. I hope all of you are familiar with Merck and Training and Consulting. Maybe you've attended some of our training courses uh, face to face or uh, virtual learning. Uh, but just a quick brief: uh, we're a company that was established in 1958. So we've been here for quite a while. Uh, we have very good relationship with many of our partners, companies, and we deliver two types of services mainly. Uh, the corporate training, uh, development of uh, competencies for staff in different areas, different industries. We, we, we have over uh, 26 categories, uh, 300 courses in different topics. Uh, and we offer also uh, in-house courses, which basically we fly into a destination, uh, whether it is, uh, you know, Saudi, Kuwait, or any of the other destinations around us here, and we deliver uh, specific training solutions. We have also consulting, uh, a consulting arm, which basically delivers uh, in terms of KPI, strategy, HR consulting as well. So we do sometimes help organization deploy some of the concepts that we actually discuss in our training courses. Uh, as I mentioned, we, we, we cover over 26 categories in terms of the training that we have. So we've got training in, in different fields from the quality and productivity, from the Lean and Six Sigma, all the way to the customer service, to the construction management, uh, project management. And many of these training courses 
are basically accredited. Uh, so you can get your accreditation through going through an exam or a project. So from the PMP uh, to the Society of Human Resources uh, to Harriet Watt University, we've got many programs that basically are indicated as being associated and accredited by some international bodies. So, you know, we, we have that relationship that you can basically use to develop yourself and get maybe that certification that you need to get uh, moving within your career or even switch switching to another career uh, as well. And uh, as we get into uh, Merck, uh, if you allow me to introduce myself, my name is Fauzi, uh, Fauzi Bawab, and uh, I'm, I'm an engineer by profession. Uh, my uh, engineering training started with my civil engineering, so my bachelor's degree is in civil engineering. And um, I, I got that passion for quality uh, and operational excellence during my civil engineering studies. So I pursued my uh, master's in industrial engineering um, and, and did my research in quality and total quality management. And not only that, I went into research and finished my PhD at Edinburgh Business School, Harriet Watt University, and did it in operational excellence and Lean Six Sigma as one of the topics that I researched in my uh, thesis. Uh, my, my experience you know, ranges uh, from uh, quality operational excellence, implementation of quality systems, the ISOs, uh, and I, I did wear the hat of strategy as well. Uh, so I, I got into consulting, I got into managing quality systems as a quality manager with IBM. Uh, I worked with a number of companies before moving to Dubai uh, and joining Merck, uh, including uh, KPMG, uh, including uh, BSI, uh, including IBM as well, and uh, Talal Abu Ghazali, one of the regional consulting companies in the region. Uh, so uh, upon joining Merck 2004, uh, I became a partner in 2007, and I look after the operational excellence and quality management training and consulting services at, at Merck, something I love, something which is very dear to my heart, and I feel that, uh, you know, I'm being biased now that every profession could really benefit from understanding quality and operational excellence ideas. So that's where uh, I wanted to uh, share with you some of the practices, experiences that we've been uh, you know, doing with other companies, uh, implementing lean uh, practices in companies. Now, uh, you know, sometimes why are we talking about this topic? I, I noticed many people when they started their project in Lean, they might be, they might get confused with with the, with the with the, the with the array of uh, tools that are available to them, and sometimes it just you know giving giving them guidance on on what are the tools needed might be a very very good idea to improve the success rate of such projects. So I, I thought I'll pick some of the tools, uh, maybe three tools, as I mentioned in my title here, and then maybe we can take it uh, through some discussion. Uh, again, I mean, we can spend days talking about them and the application. I thought I will give you a brief uh, on, on this webinar and maybe try to answer some questions. As I mentioned, the maturity of an organization will decide what type of uh, methodology or practices you would use. Uh, when I say maturity, I refer to the mindset maturity. Uh, some companies are still reactive in their mindset. Uh, you know, the, the, the idiom which says, you know, they're, they're continually fighting fires. Uh, you know, once a fire starts, then they go and look to, to fight it. Uh, but, uh, you know, that mentality of being proactive is not there yet. And they're still relying on what we refer to the inspection mentality. Um, other companies moved on uh, and they, they went up the ladder, as you can see, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it as a ladder, and they started talking about maybe stabilizing their system, uh, identifying a framework such as maybe the ISO 9001 as a common framework for quality, establishing their procedures, and then moving forward or upwards in that ladder and maybe moving into an incremental improvement mentality or a continual improvement mentality where people are engaged through teams, uh, continual improvement tools are educated across the, the, the organization itself, uh, calculating the cost of poor quality to give visibility to the idea of quality as something that can save the company uh, money. Uh, and then of course, some companies and organization went to the re revolution mindset, uh, which basically tells you that 
that now they're thinking in a totally different uh, mode, uh, challenging every process, re-engineering their operations, uh, digital uh, transforming their operations as well, which is now we're living big time, uh, you know, getting into the Six Sigma and getting into the lean mentality. Uh, so sometimes it, it might be a good idea just to think, where do you stand as an organization? Uh, what type of methodology will be most appropriate? Uh, are you ready for, for a change? Remember, all these tools, all these methodologies require change. So change management and making sure that you have the right prerequisites, if I may, uh, are important to get into this discussion. So lean is one of the concepts, whether you know the company is ready for it or not. But lean makes sense because um, it is simple. And when, when we discuss lean in our training, many people will refer to it as something that they've been doing it as a good business practice. Some of them are already doing it, maybe in their, uh, in their kitchen, at home. Uh, you know, the, the way that you organize maybe your workplace. Uh, so people do understand lean because if you are a person that, uh, you know, wants productivity, you want to organize your workplace, you want to do things faster, more efficient, you might have already adopted some practices that are basically core to lean, but you didn't know that they were part of the lean uh, mindset. So we, when we start talking about lean, many people say, okay, so what is lean? And this is where I want to invite you to scan this QR code uh, on the screen and throw in uh, your definitions. So you can actually put more than one definition if you may. Um, you know, when people say lean, is it an acronym? Uh, is it uh, an abbreviation? Is it a word that you can pull from a dictionary? Uh, so what is lean? Uh, you know, if you start to think about lean as a word, lean as a concept, what does it mean? Uh, if you can scan the QR code on the screen, and then I'm going to share uh, some of your um, uh, answers on the screen so we can see uh, what everyone thinks that lean is, and then we'll take it from there. So uh, I'll give you a couple of minutes, uh, scan the QR code using your phone, and you should be able to uh, enter uh, your definition. You can enter actually more than one definition uh, if you want. So here is what I will do. I will uh, give you a couple of minutes maybe, and then I will be sharing with you uh, what are the answers that will start to, 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 to be there. All right, so let's see uh, the results, but you can continue doing some stuff and entering your, uh, so, uh, the QR code, are, are you okay with the QR code? If you have any issues, let me know, but you should be able to scan your QR code and, and enter your definitions of lean. Um, if not, you wanna uh, throw it in the chat as well. You can write your lean in the chat. Um, okay, so let's see what are the lean uh, definitions. So just again, you can scan, here's the QR code, just scan it with your phone, and then you have the chance to enter your definition uh, on what is lean. And then I'll share it with you just to see if we have some common understanding or common meanings for, for lean. Scan through your QR, QR code, uh, your phone, and you should be able to enter uh, maybe a couple of definitions. Okay, so let me see if, we have definitions uh, in here. Okay. Okay, so we do have some answers uh, and I can uh, start sharing with you some of the uh, lean concept that started to appear on the screen. So here we go. And we see some interesting results. Um, so here we go. Uh, yes, uh, there is someone uh, that actually more than one that uh, mentioned the word waste. Uh, you know, lean is waste, absolutely. 
uh, yes, uh, the, the, the moda, uh, the mori, the mora. Uh, we can see here the word that is about fast, um, uh, you know, fast, uh, shorter. Uh, you can see here that word that is appearing as well, which is non-value added. Uh, and we can see also it, it, it goes into someone said that you want to reduce defects and time loss. So I, I see some common variables here, time loss, speed, waste, uh, moda as the Japanese call it, which is the, the different types of waste. Um, and you can see here that uh, simple, the word simple processes, which is uh, interesting because uh, maybe lean, when you think about a, a lean word in the dictionary, you are thinking about something which is uh, free of waste. I mean, you can call someone being uh, lean. You can go and buy maybe a meat from the butcher and say, give me lean meat. So it is simple. It is less fat if you may, if you talk about the meat or your steak, but indeed the word waste the word uh, shorter, faster comes to our mind when people start talking about lean. So uh, it's, it's a waste elimination methodology. I like that. Uh, so basically it's pushing us to come back and look at what is important for us in terms of adding value to our customers. So if we continue with that definition and we can see here uh, some kind of a concept, it basically confirms what you have just told us, that it is about eliminating waste. Uh, now, what is the type of waste? The eight types of waste, or some people call them the seven, and then there's one more as well. So eight types of waste. It's not about reducing headcount. It's not about firing people. Uh, it's about becoming simple in your operation, uh, optimizing them, removing waste, and reducing the cycle time that we see in our operations. And it is in the same time, understanding the value that we can bring to our customers. So lean is really connected to the hip with the value that we present to our customers. And, and, and that's one of the core principles when we start talking about the five principles uh, of lean. So value, which means right time, right price, connected to our customer, and in the same time, looking at cost and performance. Waste, some of you indicated in your definition, which basically refers about you know, optimizing the resources and making sure that there is no uh, duplication, there is no redundancy, there is no movement, excessive movement, uh, there is no excessive inventory. So we, we can bring in what we call the non-value added, and we can say, let me examine a process and let me try to take it out from my process. And, and this is what's happening right now that we are continuously challenging our processes because you can see this over the last year, especially with the introduction of uh, technology, many activities are being re-challenged. Why should I go through 10 steps when I need to open my bank account? Uh, why should I go and you know uh, spend two hours visiting a utility uh, facility to connect uh, water and electricity to my home? Why can't I just you know connect it to with my with my uh, ID uh, through a governmental uh, verified uh, system and then get everything uh, done? So in our region, and I'm talking here about the uh, the region of of the Middle East and and even the GCC. We're real act we're actually making lots of changes and lots of improvement in in in, in this sense. Just taking you through history, uh, you know, if you think about lean, uh, we can trace it back to the days of Henry Ford and uh, the Ford Motor Company, uh, Taishi Omo, Omo Toyota, uh, Shingo. A uh, Japanese industrial engineer, he came up with also a tool called uh, the Pokeyoka. Uh, James Womack, the author of the machine that changed the word. And this is where the first maybe lean manufacturing, lean thinking started to take that, uh, you know, known name uh, from that book. Uh, the machine that changed the word here is the famous book, where in this book, uh, it was a research, it was uh, visits. Uh, this team went and visited 
uh, many organizations worldwide and they discovered that Toyota was by far the most efficient uh, in terms of their operations, in terms of their capacity, uh, usage of uh, operations, uh, not only in the manufacturing, but also in the other sectors as well, including customer service, procurement, design, uh, all other areas, Lean uh, was basically implemented in these sectors. And uh, the, 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 the book that came in started to show some of the benefits. So we can uh, maybe conclude that Lean is about reducing waste, cost, because time and, and uh, is money, uh, cycle time, efficiency, uh, employee uh, involvement and morale, uh, all these could be seen as uh, potential benefits if lean is implemented in the right manner. And it's, it's not treated as another program or another project that we want just want to take. It is something that becomes uh, uh, embedded in the culture of the organization and everyone becomes trained on the tools and the thinking. And, and you can think here, it is basically, as some of you mentioned, it's about making things faster. It's about reducing waste. So any time or any work that we do is basically you know, described by the total cycle time. Now, the actual work, if you think about it, this is what we refer to as the value added work, but there are many items that we can refer to them as the non-value added activities. My job as a lean practitioner is through the usage of certain tools is to try to identify and try to maybe minimize or even eliminate right, some of these stuff. And by doing that, what happens to my cycle time? Um, my cycle time will become less. And as I become less in my cycle time, my efficiency, my productivity goes up and my cost goes down. So this is where uh, we see a, a high percentage a large percentage of the processing time that is in organization is consumed in non-value added activities. So a lean practitioner through the knowledge of the tools, their job is basically to try to reduce that percentage. Um, I mean, we can spend, you know, again, the next five days talking about all these five lean principles, but basically we're saying it's all about value. Value comes from the customer perspective. Anything that is not linked to the customer voice, uh, customer need, something that we might refer to as non-value added. Uh, an exercise or a tool that we might use, one of the tools I will uh, bring uh, later on, is the value stream mapping. Uh, mapping is, is an amazing uh, tool. We give a visual to the process, we engage the team, and we, we start to identify the non-value added activities. We establish some kind of a, of, of a, of a system where we are flowing uh, our process, i.e. we are creating that flow that is continuously running, and it is depending on a, a technique called the pull. So nothing is being done upstream unless the customer or the next station or the next area ask for it. Now, immediately by doing this, we reveal if you have any bottlenecks, any constraints, if you have unbalanced lines. So we get into the details of calculating something called the tacket time in, in lean. Uh, but again, this is part of the discussion that we have once we have some kind of a visual uh, stream map in place. The work for perfection, number five, is bringing everything back to the cycle that we know in, uh, in quality. Uh, which basically we are there to continually improve there uh, to con continually improve our processes and we never stop and we go back and we try to improve. So the tools get you there. The principles, these five principles, keep you focused on that direction uh, and compass. And uh, again, the tools, uh, there are a number of tools that will depend on the cultural maturity, on uh, what is important for us, and we can you know, look at different tools from the value stream mapping to the visual management to the uh, single minute exchange of dice, 5S. So I picked a number of these uh, tools, three of them uh, that we can uh, quickly present to you and show you what are they. A very important topic, uh, which basically takes me maybe to this slide, uh, is your projects in Lean 
they must be linked to your strategic objectives and customer needs. Now, how do we do that? There is a tool. It comes from the two words here, Hoshan Canary, which means policy deployment or strategic direction. Some people call it. Uh, it is a tool that uh, basically links your strategic objectives with the lean projects that you intend to do. Uh, this is the direct translation, uh, management by policy, uh, a plan, uh, but in essence, it's, it's a template, it's a tool, I'll show you now the template, where you start putting your, let's say, three years or five years strategic goal. From these goals, you need to start cascading them into the yearly goals and then the objectives. So it is basically a strategic deployment tool. Now, some people, as I describe it, they might be familiar with the balance scorecard approach uh, where we do similar uh, you know, methodology to try to cascade our objective. But the idea here, I'll show you now uh, the template. Uh, the idea here is to move from the top management objectives into specific goals and projects that we can use for my lean project. So to ensure that my lean project is linked to a strategic objective. So when I ask you a question, how is this lean project linked to strategy? You can immediately show me the linkage through this template. So let me save time here and take you directly to the template. So here's the template. And usually we start by doing the three to five year breakthrough objectives. So you would write them here, you would write them here. So it may be three, four main objectives on the corporate organizational level. And then we start to go around. So you can see here the arrow and we start taking maybe this one, uh, this first objective, and maybe we'll go and uh, bring it down or break it down into uh, an annual uh, objective. So we might take this objective that we need actually to satisfy in three, five years. And then we might say, okay, for, every year, what would be the objective, and we would write it down. Don't worry, I'll, I'll show you now a completed template, but as we start to go from one section to another, we start to see uh, strategic objectives into operational objectives or really objectives, and then we can put some improvement priorities as we start to do that. So we do some kind of mapping or linkage between that objective all the way till we get to the specific projects, and then we can assign them to people. Let me uh, share with you maybe a completed one that will make sense. As you can see here, uh, we have an objective to increase output to 12,500 uh, units per year. Uh, this was done on a three-year target. Uh, and then you go and see here that they have started with 2011. This was, let's say this was done in 2010, and it gives you the 2013 strategic plan. So three years strategic plan. And then they started taking this objective. You can see here, they broke it down into increasing output to 9,900. So this is in 2011. And then you can see the linkage as they start connecting it with a specific improvement project. So improve average assembly time becomes a, a project. And you can see here that uh, they say improve as assembly time, but then they link it to this one here. And you can see improve average assembly time from 4.25 to 3.75. This is immediately a project maybe for lean, where I am studying the cycle time of this assembly and trying to reduce it. So this could be a potential project for lean that is directly connected to my strategic objectives where I can show the linkage between this project and its impact on my strategic plan. So this is a tool to ensure that my projects are really connected to my strategy. So Hoshin Canary uh, policy deployment is something that we can do at the beginning uh, of any lean projects to ensure that when we discuss projects that they are uh, directly connected to my uh, strategy. Uh, another tool, very useful tool, uh, it's called the value stream mapping. Now, the word mapping might be familiar with many people. Maybe you've done already uh, process mapping, uh, which is you know one type 
Although value stream mapping tends to be more specific to lean because you need to actually collect data. We need to go, uh, as the Japanese call it, you need to go to the gamba. You need to go and observe work. You need to actually record uh, how the work is being done in terms of the cycle time, in terms of the elements. And value stream mapping tends to take more of a systematic approach where we look at the relation from our suppliers uh, and then all the way to the operations, all the way to the customer. So there is this kind of link and it doesn't sit in one department. Hence, when we do the lean uh, concept, we need to have that systematic holistic overview of the process that we have in our operation because you're trying to affect customer. And customer sometimes value comes from the interaction of various uh, departments in our operations. So the value stream map will take you through a process of defining certain elements uh, and then drawing a visual representation we refer to as the current state. And once we do that, we engage in the discussion of reducing waste and removing bottlenecks and removing uh, what we call inventory. And uh, for example, you know, we, we're trying basically to reduce the cycle time and trying to look at how we can reduce the non-value added time. So in this example, you can see here that a certain process, which is called contract request process, uh, we're examining by going to the Gamba and trying to understand uh, that the cycle time is 24 hours, uh, there is uh, two hours of value added time versus 22 hours of waste. So we're, we're trying basically to actually get to the new one. And you can see now the improvement from 24 hours to 12 hours. And then who knows, maybe you can actually reduce the 12 hours uh, to actually less than that. So just to show you a glimpse of how it looks, um, maybe I'll take you to this one. Uh, because there's a little bit of work we have to do to decide on that. There is actually uh, certain symbols we have to use in the value stream mapping. Remember, these symbols started with the manufacturing. Uh, so you can see the manufacturing related. However, we can still do value stream mapping for uh, procurement, for customer service, for service oriented. We tend to use something called the swim lane, but then we can actually show the numbers on the swim lane itself. I'll show you what I mean in a minute, but let me show you here's like two examples of how they're done in, in actual uh, boardrooms. And uh, here is, yeah, here is maybe a value stream map where the symbols have been used and it's showing you that the customer order is here and then the operations start with the stations you can see here this takes 15 minutes it takes seven days to prepare the inventory to move to the next station uh, and then you can see an interesting number here 1020 hours of non-value added versus 20 hours of value added so the actual time that we really work on the part, the service is actually 20 hours versus 1,020 hours of, of, of that. So 2% value added time versus 98% of waste. The next step is basically to try to identify opportunities and take them to the next step, which is basically uh, trying to now use some of the tools within Lean whether it is the uh, waste identification, whether it is uh, creating a single piece, a piece flow, one of the techniques under Lean, uh, or whether maybe changing the uh, work uh, layout into a cell layout. So there are some techniques that we can use in Lean to try to understand how this happens. Uh, and then uh, we basically brainstorm with the team and get them to work with us. So you can see here an example of how it gets really busy, uh, exciting, and it, it really involved the team uh, because we, we tend to start drawing it. We go to the Gamba, we go to the place, we collect data, we go back, record them, talk to the people who are uh, doing the work and try to understand uh, what exactly we can do. So you can see here a drop in the number of steps and even the number of days that we have uh, in this value stream. Um, and here's also another one that uh, we do in our training as well, when we train people how to do it. And they start you know, putting in the uh, 
the numbers and trying to work on the current state. So current state moving into a future state, which is our recommended uh, thing. So this is the value stream map. Of course, you know, we can spend two, three days maybe working on it and uh, practicing and applying these concepts, but it is one of the main tools that can help us move to the lean uh, concept. Uh, swim lanes, as we said, can be used with transactional, with uh, service uh, oriented processes uh, as well. Another famous tool, maybe you've run into it in the past, it's called the 5S program, uh, which basically uh, it's a nice tool that can be implemented at your home, uh, on your uh, desktop, on your computer, in your office. And it is basically uh, a tool to help us organize our workplace. Uh, we would like basically to become more organized because indeed, if you have areas that are not organized, I mean, look at this picture here, you're definitely gonna have accidents, uh, safety issues, uh, you know, getting to do the work is not comfortable. Uh, it, it's gonna be tough. It's gonna take time to find the tools. It's gonna be tough to find what you need, even if you are looking at organizing a, a computer, uh, maybe with the files or a network, uh, that also might take that. So the five S is basically these five steps started with Japan, Japanese word again, and it is about organizing for efficiency. So what are these different types of, of steps that we can look at uh, from Siri, which basically the first step where we have to sort and remove unneeded uh, activities, unneeded uh, uh, parts. Uh, so we need to create a system for what to keep and what to throw. Creating a system or a place to arrange for things and Maybe it's a barcode, maybe it's a color, maybe it's, uh, it's something to help me understand how to use it, how to store it. Uh, and then we have the cleanup, uh, which is cleaning everything around the area and then creating a standard or a checklist. But maybe the most important and difficult one is the last one, which is making 5S the culture, sustaining the activities. So we actually engage in a two-day event for the 5S when we want to implement it with organization. We teach, them, we teach them on the concepts. We give them the tools like the checklist. We ask them to go and uh, record or take uh, captures by, by cameras. And then we come back and we discuss what can we do to make the workplace uh, uh, organized uh, and more uh, efficient and productive in terms of what we do. So look at these pictures. These are lovely pictures here. Everything is organized. And by the way, some industries, you don't have a choice. You have to be organized. I mean, for example, the healthcare, uh, operation rooms in hospitals, uh, some sensitive uh, industries where they deal with, uh, you know, uh, manufacturing of, of, uh, of, of technology. Uh, clean rooms. Uh, these are very critical uh, where uh, everything has to be organized and put in its place. Uh, so uh, again, I, I, I wish we had more time to discuss. I mean, many of these tools will basically uh, require us to spend maybe a couple of days on each tool uh, and maybe practice and then do exercises. Uh, but uh, I try to, you know, give you a little bit of uh, a flavor uh, uh, some information about these tools that I thought they are um, important to know. Uh, lean implementation is simple, but not simplistic sometimes given the culture, the change that we need to do. Uh, many other tools are available from, you know, the single minute exchange of dyes, one piece flow, uh, poke yoke. Uh, but indeed, uh, I think the two factors that can help us achieve success is also uh, consider you know, top management support, their understanding, and enlisting staff cooperation. Um, I hope you have enjoyed the session. Uh, again, many of these concepts are discussed in our training courses uh, and um, in more detail, in more practice, in more applications. Uh, so, you know, would love to see you on, on these courses in, in the future. But uh, let's get your questions. If you have any specific questions, uh, please shoot it on the chat. Uh, and then, uh, you know, we can uh, look and see if we can answer that. Uh, yes, I see a question, Ibrahim. Um, 
are the template standard from one organized source or was it done by individual? Uh, basically, it, it was uh, done by, I mean, the, the, the source, it, it, is, it, it, it looks the same. The, the template is the same. Uh, it was, uh, it was uh, done by, uh, I can't remember the name of the organization, but uh, it, it, is, it is the same template. I mean, the, the, the same template that you will see uh, everywhere. Uh, and uh, you know it's it's a standard template, if you may. Um, what uh, which which is the best organization to find lean references? You mean lean practices? You mean or lean uh, references? Um, I mean lean. You know, I, I, are you talking lean tools? Okay, um, okay. Uh, so uh, you can basically. Uh, are you looking for? Uh, Templates. Uh, there is uh, maybe uh, there is something called. Uh, I can give you a couple of like uh, Q. There is QI macros. Uh, send it right now. Uh, I mean, this is uh, a friend of mine called Jay Arthur. So he talks about Lean and Sigma. And you can find many templates are there for free. Um, you can get the templates from there. Absolutely. Um, all right, any other questions? Um, I hope I haven't bored you or I hope you have found <laughs> the session uh, interesting. Um, and if you have any questions, let me know. I'll be more than pleased to answer. Okay, um, yes, thank you very much, thank you. Thank you for joining. I see some familiar names. I think uh, I've seen you before in our uh, uh, training, maybe some of you, I think, or some of webinars. I see some familiar names as well uh, on, on, on the list of names. So thank you very much for joining us. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, and it is recorded so you can come back and uh, yes, yes, Ibrahim, 2014. Wow, 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 wow. I have to go and find the picture now, right? This, I, I, I remember, I remember your name. I remember the, your name. Uh, so uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Ibrahim. Um, all right. Um, thank you very much, guys. Enjoy your afternoon and uh, look forward to seeing you again uh, in our uh, uh, webinars or training. Thank you, guys. Merck.com.